Hello guys and welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to check a very interesting and capable new stack by Speedybit. In this video I'm going to go over its features and specs and show you how to install it on this new build which I'm going to test soon after bench testing the new Racestar RC line of motors. First of all, in terms of packaging, inside the box you can find the stack which is based on a 45A DL8032 4-in-1 ESC and an F7 flight controller. 7cm long 12 gauge battery leads which are pre-soldered to a high quality XT60 battery connector, a shorter and a longer 8 pins GSD harnesses for connecting the 4-in-1 ESC with the flight controller, a harness for connecting the flight controller with the DJI Air unit, a bag with plastic M3 nuts, o-rings and spare silicon grommets in addition to the ones which are pre-inserted to the flight controller and 4-in-1 ESC, a 35V 470 microfarad capacitor and 5 3cm long M3 screws. In terms of features and specs, the flight controller features an F7 processor, 2A 5V and 9V VCs, a USB Type-C connector, a dedicated GST port for connecting the DJI Air unit, an MPU 6000 gyro chip which is located exactly on the center of the flight controller, an onboard barometer, 5 well-positioned full UART ports, an onboard 16MB of memory for storing black box data and a Bluetooth slash Wi-Fi chip that is going to enable you to wirelessly configure the flight controller and even flash it with new firmware using SpeedyBee's app. As for the 45A BL8032 4-in-1 EAC, it supports a continuous current of 45A per motor with a peak current of 55A for 10 seconds. It features pretty big and well separated motor and battery pads. It can be powered with between 3 to 6S batteries, it features a built-in current sensor. In addition to the 8 pins GST connector, you can find matching soldering pads. And on the battery pads, which unlike the motor pads can be accessed from both top and bottom sides of the board, you can find dedicated holes for soldering a capacitor. In addition, the weight of the flight controller is 9.6 grams. The weight of the 4-in-1 ESC is 13.6 grams, so together their total weight is 23.3 grams. The outer dimensions of the flight controller are 38 by 37.8 by 5 mm. The 4-in-1 ESC is slightly bigger and its outer dimensions are 40 by 42.4 by 6 mm. The total height of the stack, including the silicon grommets, is 16 mm. And both 4-in-1 ESC and flight controller feature this cutout which is going to help you to fit an FPB camera on a very tight build. Now after mounting the SpeedyB 4-in-1 ESC on the Zizkapish 5-inch frame, which by the way has a relatively low profile and required me to use shorter screws than the ones that were included with the stack, I went ahead and soldered the Racerstar RC 2306.5 1650KV motors to the board and I'm going to show you how to wire an FPB camera, an analog VTX and a radio receiver to the flight controller. First of all, SpeedyB made it pretty simple and all the pads on the flight controller are labeled. The FEB camera is going to be wired to these pads, which are conveniently located on the front of the flight controller. So over here you can find 5 volts, ground, video in and camera control pads. The radio receiver is going to be wired to these pads, so over here you can find ground, 4.5 volts pad which is going to power the radio receiver even when the flight controller is going to be powered only via USB, R1, T1, RSSI, and 3.3V pad. A GPS unit can be wired to these pads which are located on the back of the flight controller. So over here you can find 5V, ground, T6, R6, SDA, and SCL pads. The VTX is going to be wired to these pads next to them. So over here you can find 5V, T2, R2, 9V pad, ground, and video out pad. Finally, in addition to the buzzer and LED pads, over here you can find a battery pad, which you can use in case you would like to power your device directly using the battery voltage. In addition, in case you would like to connect the DJI Air unit or the Cadex Vista to the flight controller, you can easily do so using the provided harness and this GST connector. The right pin is SPAS slash R1, then ground, R2, T2, ground, and the left pin outputs 9 volts. Now as you can see, I've got the FPV camera wired to the relevant soldering pads. And since I'm using the Runcam Racer 2, instead of using the camera control pad, I'm using RX3 and TX3 pads, and then using UART mode, I'll be able to configure the camera. 
In addition, I'm also using the Crossfire Nano SC receiver, a 4 pin GSD connector, which I'm going to connect to the Matic M8Q GPS is soldered to the GPS pads, and finally, the SpeedyB VTX DVR is wired to the VTX pads. As I mentioned before, the SpeedyB V2 flight controller features a Wi Fi slash Bluetooth chip, which enables us to wirelessly configure it and even flash it with new firmware updates using SpeedyB's app, which is available both for iOS and Android devices. You should note that unlike the SpeedyB Adapter 2, after powering the flight controller, a new Wi Fi network is not going to be generated, so the normal configuration is done over Bluetooth. And when using the flight controller, firmware flasher, and black box explorer tools, the initial connection is going to be done over Bluetooth, and then it's going to be automatically switched to Wi Fi. Now, as you can see, I've got the flight controller powered up. By opening SpeedyB's app and hitting the Bluetooth icon, you'll be able to configure the flight controller and pretty much every feature that is present on the Betaflight application on desktop is also present on SpeedyB app and on top of that, you'll be able to change the motor direction on both BLL32 and BLLS 4 in 1 ESCs which is a recently added feature that I've already covered on the previous video. As for flashing the flight controller with a new firmware, by selecting FC firmware flashing from the side menu, you'll be able to connect to the flight controller first over Bluetooth then switch to Wi-Fi, select the relevant firmware update, and flash the flight controller with the new firmware. Similarly, you'll be able to access the new Black Box Explorer, which as you can see is currently empty, since I still haven't used this flight controller. In addition, you should note that when the Bluetooth and Wi-Fi connections are active, this LED on the flight controller is going to light up, and in order to prevent any signal interference when the drone is armed, the Bluetooth and Wi-Fi connections are going to be turned off. So overall, after initially examining the SpeedyB V2 stack, and keep in mind that I still have to test it out, which is going to happen pretty soon, I can tell you that it looks like a high quality and very capable stack, which might be the perfect solution for somebody that doesn't have a computer, but having that said, in case you are not in the market for a new flight controller, and you would like to add similar wireless capabilities to a current one, you can simply purchase the SpeedyB adapter too. Anyway, that's going to be it for my review of the SpeedyB V2 stack, as always, I thank you for watching my video, I hope you enjoyed it and you find it useful. If you have any questions, feel free to ask them in the comments section down below. Don't forget to leave a thumbs up if you like this video, and consider subscribing to my channel and hitting the notifications bell if you're not already subscribed. See you on my next videos, and goodbye.